Hey everyone, thank you for joining uh, this special session we have uh, with uh, MinIO. Uh, so uh, today uh, we have Brenna uh, from MinIO and she's going to talk a little bit about is our relationship between Starrock Seller Data and MinIO. So Brenna, take it away from here. Thanks. Um, so my name is Brenna Book. I'm a developer evangelist at MinIO. Um, I like to write about databases and data lakes. Um, today, I'm, I have a deck to share with you about who we are and what we do. Let me share my screen. Show off deck. So some of you, especially those of you in this space, might already know who we are. But for those who don't, we're high-performance Kubernetes native object store. We are born in the cloud. We're a drop-in replacement for AWS 3, but we can run anywhere on AWS, GCP, Azure, but also on-prem, on colos, on edge. We do that because we think about the cloud as an operating model and not as a physical place. The only thing we do is object storage. And because of that, we've generated a huge audience of developers and a following in the developer community. We've got more than two exabytes under data management globally. And if you look at the numbers on the left, you'll see that we've done 1.3 billion Docker polls in aggregate. We do about a million per day. And that's pretty remarkable when you consider that this is storage software. We've been highly decorated and the ones we like the most are the reader awards. And those are the ones that we won time and time again. It just speaks to the fact that developers love Mineo. And you might ask why, why is that? Why, why is there so much love? Um, oh gosh. So there's three guiding principles for why people love MinIO. Um, performance, cloud native, and simplicity. Um, we'll go a little more in detail on that. So first of all, MinIO is the world's fastest object store. It can read 325 gigs a second and write 177 gigs a second. And that's just with 32 nodes of NVMe. And performance is not just a vanity metric for us. It's really more that performance delivers more workloads. And so from a Starrocks perspective, that means that you can run Starrocks directly on top of MinIO, and you just can't do that with most object stores. The throughput simply aren't there. The IOP simply aren't there. But with MinIO and performant object storage like MinIO, that's possible. And this performance standard extends to ML workloads and other query engine workloads as well, um, but also traditional streaming and archival workloads. I think lastly, um, I would say that MinIO is, a, is performant on any commercial software that you want. So whether that's Intel or AMD or ARM, you can run MinIO anywhere, and that's basically going to max out the network. Second thing I think that's really important to talk about is the fact that MinIO is cloud native, and this is opposed to multi-protocol behemoth storage solutions that were created well before Kubernetes. When you're truly well and truly native as we are, you just work out of the box with almost every single component of the modern data stack, and that's a huge plus. Um, Starbox and MinIO didn't have any work when they um, wanted to get together. It just worked. And and this is really uh, because we're native to the concepts of containerization, orchestration, automation, and APIs, and specifically um, RESTful APIs like S3. Again, the cloud is an operating model. It's not a, a physical place. And once you adopt the set of principles, you can move your workloads anywhere and you can execute them anywhere. And then last and probably most importantly is that MinIO is simple and we obsess over simplicity. Um, and the reason why is that simplicity scales. The MinIO binary is a hundred megabytes and it can be deployed into production in minutes. It can be updated in subseconds non-disruptively and you can stack them indefinitely to build giant infrastructure. Uh, Brenna, just a uh, uh, question for you. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about performance. Uh, so uh, what's the difference between, say, for instance, on average, MinIO versus like AWS's performance or Azure or GCP's performance? 
Yeah, that's great. Um, so we have benchmarks on the website um, that'll show that we're more performant than S3, even deployed to AWS. Um, so it's worthwhile to check out those benchmarks. You can replicate them yourself. We are the most performant object storage on the market. Cool, right. thanks. I mean, good question. <laughs> um, all right, so um, there's also, we also have a whole suite of enterprise features and I won't go and talk about each and every one of these because it's a lot. Um, and, and I'm sure this deck will be available to you guys afterwards if you wanna read through. We'll talk about a, a few. And the first I really wanna point out is Lambda Compute. And this uh, allows you to transform data, usually to mask PII, like email addresses or credit cards um, as it comes in. And it's generally thought of as only available for AWS S3, but MinIO offers full support. And we also offer inline erasure code and bit rot protection. Erasure coding is a modern way to protect data and MinIO has spent a ton of time on the optimization front to ensure that there's no overhead associated with executing that and making your data more resilient. And the last that I would say, and, and this is uh, where MinIO is uniquely qualified, and um, this is also to address one of the questions that you sent over to me, um, we support active, active, a strictly consistent multi-site replication. And this is what large data infrastructure requires in order to be truly resilient and to suffer through any business continuity issues that you might imagine. So yeah, so, yeah, exactly, Brenna. I, mean, I mentioned is that uh, one of the big issues that we have with Star Rocks uh, and our with our shared data model where we have separation of computer storage, we just connect to uh, S3 storage, right? So we don't manage uh, S3, right? We expect someone else to provide us the S3 bucket, right? So especially if we're talking about like connecting to US West 2, and if US West 2 region goes down, where's all that data, right? And are you saying that this feature will allow us to replicate that data in real time to another region, to on-prem or even to another cloud provider? Yeah, so uh, you can set uh the fault tolerance that you're comfortable with, whether it's a node, uh, a disk, a rack, or an entire data center, and uh, we'll protect your data. That's we're, we're really good at. Um, got a ton of information online about active, active replication. It's really a fundamental feature of MinIO is that um, whatever your SLA, uh, we can meet it and and keep your data safe. Right. So so. That sounds great because that will provide us is a uh, a DR solution for our Star Rocks users who use the separation of computer storage. One caveat though is that this just only moves the the data in S three. So uh, there's another piece uh, for the Star Rocks users is that it's uh, HMS, so Hive Metastore. Uh, we have to create the the entries in Hive Metastore in the new location. Because uh, obviously the you, we can't replicate HMS storage because it'll, the point of reference is to all the S3 buckets will not be the same ones once we're in the new place. Um, but this does go a huge way to at least get the raw data from one region, from one cloud provider to another region or to on-prem or to another uh, other one. What are some other scenarios that you've seen uh, with... Um, with active active uh, have you seen places where um you know customers have kind of like wanted to move their cloud workloads to the cloud or even you know out of the cloud yeah so that's a really good uh point we're seeing um a pattern with our customers who are um repatriating uh from the cloud um so uh there's a tremendous cost savings that are, is possible to leverage with that pattern. Um, and like I said before, you can deploy MinIO almost anywhere that you need. And so when you're using your own disks um, or your own colo, um, there's the opportunity for um, for cost savings really skyrocket. So that is a pattern that we're seeing um, more and more users uh, executing on. Cool, cool. All right, awesome. Uh, so this is just a, uh, there's more features on here if you guys want to explore it. Um, 
one of the th things that has happened in the last number of years is that object storage has really become primary storage. Um, and you can see this first and foremost in the database area. So this is evident in announcements by the major uh, database vendors for external table capabilities. We have some uh, logos there, including Starbox. Um, in, in backup and in snapshots, uh, which we've covered, um, and but but more specifically in the um, storage and compute separation art, architecture, like like Starbox, um, with with analytic engines like Starbox, um, and the reason for this is that object storage like MinIO has the throughput and capability to scale. It's really fundamentally necessary to have a modern. Um, uh, modern disaggregation storage and compute. AL, uh, AI and ML workloads have almost always been an object store play. Uh, Kubeflow, for example, ships with MinIO embedded into it. Uh, TensorFlow really speaks to four different integrations, AWS, UCP, Azure, and MinIO. Um, and, and, you know, the rest of the stack, um, log analytics and other, other things, um, they all integrate on a first-class basis with MinIO. And then, of course, you have the more traditional standard backup and snapshotting tools. Um, but I, I direct you to look at Veeam in particular. Uh, Veeam is a company with over 300,000 customers, and they have become object storage first. Um, this is a primary target for all their backups. It's no longer SAN and NAS. It's object storage. And this is because of their ability to do more and to protect their data at larger scale, and not to mention the throughput capabilities, the performance that we've already discussed about MinIO. Um, so that's pretty cool. That so is very cool. You might be wondering how this goes to market or what this looks like, especially for databases or data lakes. So this is um, a standard kind of high performance data lake architecture. Um, the core concept here is that you have um, analytics engines um, like Starbox um, that communicate through the open table format directly to the data. And this is disaggregation at next level proportions. Um, this is what we begin to see after people started to move away from Hadoop and architecture in which storage and compute had to be tightly coupled. Um, that, that architecture is no longer um, uh, necessary or even part of the modern data stack. I instead, um, we're seeing um, this di disaggregation model taking place and taking hold where you can have multiple engines scaling independently and all the while speaking to a single source of truth. And that single source of truth is increasingly modern object storage like MinIO. Um, so whether you're, you know, you're using Starbox or ClickHouse or Trino as your, your analytics engine, uh, you get first class integration with MinIO and you can drive performance. Um, through a simple set of APIs, you know, like put, uh, get, list, delete, and so forth. Yeah, this is what we believe too at Star Rocks. We think this is the the this idea is that the uh, data lake house will eventually merge into the data uh, lake house um, model, and, and the idea is that uh, not only you have separation of compute and storage, but each one each tier being elastic but you're gonna get data warehousey like features on top of data lakes, right? Yeah. And so, uh, and to be honest, let's talk even about not just, you know, the simplification of the architecture, taking advantages of cloud computing, but the cost savings, right? You paying for a single disk, like an EBS volume versus an object store, typically uh, object store is only the 5% of the cost of the equivalent EBS, right? Like one terabyte, on EBS versus one terabyte on S3, right? So I'm expecting that MinIO can can get me those kind of cost savings, especially on prem or even on other places. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, that's their play. All right. So you also asked me um, what pricing looks like uh, for MinIO, and firstly, we have an open source product um, under an AGPLv3 license. Um, but for those who want more, we also offer two products, um, MinIO Standard and MinIO Enterprise. And you can see some of the different features and capabilities that come with either of these 
but both of them come with direct to engineer support. And this is a very unique model that Minio provides to its customers and nobody knows Minio like Minio. Um, and so therefore we offer support directly to engineers. It's more efficient, efficient to talk directly to people who know the data the best or the platform the best. Um, so we have an instant SLA via the panic button and a complete that complete suite of enterprise tools that we already discussed. And in terms of pricing, it's ten dollars a, a terabyte per month at standard and twenty dollars for enterprise. And obviously, we offer a discount as the scale goes along. And, and just for clarification on that previous screen, so there's there are no functional differences between the open source version and the standard and enterprise. No, not at this time. The license. Um, uh, what you're getting with license is the support. Okay, cool, awesome. So um, in summary, um, MinIO as a product, we just do one thing. Uh, we just do object store storage and we do that better than anyone else. Um, we're very adaptable. Um, it's a horizontal system in nature, an infinite scale, right? Um, we have enterprise uh, features, but also the flexibility and extensibility to serve uh, almost any type of workload. Um, and because of MinIO's ability to be efficient with data, um, you can um, rebuild efficiently and run efficiently on hardware. Uh, we drive superior economics, right? Uh, very often, and this is what we just talked about, you very often you'll find that when someone actually repatriates from the cloud, they'll save up to 60% based on what they were doing in the cloud um, when they use their own hardware or colos or their own you know, own data center, wherever they want to deploy MinIO. So you have that inc incredible possibility of cost savings when you uh, upon re repatriation. And that all, all because of um, how performant and efficiently we run on commercial hardware. Um, so, and then finally, uh, MinIO is built for this next generation. Uh, object storage as primary storage for database workloads is here to stay in the modern data stack. And we're here to serve the best version of that future. Cool, well, thank you, Brenna, for, for coming on to our call to tell us a little bit about MinIO. And, and uh, it, it sounds great, uh, you know, so for everybody who's interested, we have is a quick start which we built with MinIO. Uh, so uh, it allows you to de deploy our shared data architecture, which we have separation of compute and storage. And the quick start, we actually use MinIO as the basis uh, to provide the S3 features to our, uh, to our architecture. Um, any last words, uh, Brenna, before we uh, stop the call? Oh no! I mean, I just I'm really excited about this um, this type of architecture disaggregation and compute. It's so exciting, and just as a data engineer, I kind of fangirl over um, this this type of architecture. I think it's the future, and I'm I'm so glad that you guys agree. <laughs> great. Well, thank you again for your time. You have a great day. Of course. Thank you so much for having me.